You need to use proxies for your projects, but if you don't know where to start, then let me show you. We're gonna go through as much as I can tell you about proxies and how to use them in around about eight minutes, including some code examples for Python, request HTTP, HTTPX, and Playwright. But first, what types of proxies are there and which one should you use? Can be a bit daunting to know which proxies you need, and if you're running a budget, experiment isn't always, experimenting isn't always an option. So let me break it down for you. Data center proxies are IPs from cloud companies running virtual machines in large data centers across the globe. These are often cheaper to use as they're more readily available, but become but they come with a rather significant downside. It's very easy to identify a data center proxy and therefore the quality score is low, meaning any kind of bot protection will find you out. The next is the residential proxies, and these are the ones that I use the most. They're taken from residential ISPs and look much more like a real user, and therefore have a higher score and are less likely to be detected and blocked. If you're unsure which you should try, start here. The last is a much more specialized and generally more costly option. These are mobile proxies. As the name suggests, these are from 4G and 5G mobile carriers. They come with a major upside. They're much less likely to be blocked as multiple cellular devices can be using, any, using an IP at any one time, meaning if the site chooses to block it, then they're potentially excluding a large group of users. They aren't a free pass though, and given the costs associated, should only be used if you're really sure and know what you're after. Right, so we're gonna use residential proxies. So I wanna mention the sponsor of this video, which is ProxyScrape. These are the proxies that I use and the ones I'll be demonstrating with in this video. Though to be clear, the instructions will apply to almost all proxy providers. With ProxyScrape, we have access to high quality, fast, secure, and ethically sourced proxies that cover residential, data center, and mobile with rotating and sticky session options. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use, all with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe, enabling us to scrape quickly and efficiently. If you're just starting out, I'd recommend the residential proxies as these are the best option for passing anti-bot protection on sites. And with the auto rotation or the sticky sessions I mentioned earlier, this is the simplest but most effective way to avoid our projects being blocked and allowing us access to the data we need. I'll show you in this video how it's only one line of code to add, and then we can let Proxy Scrape handle the rest. And any traffic you purchase is yours to use whenever you need as it doesn't ever expire. If you prefer the data center proxies though, then ProxyScrape has you covered there too. Unlimited bandwidth, 99% uptime, no rate limit and IP auth makes them a great option for the right use case. So if this all sounds good to you, go ahead and check out ProxyScrape at the link in the description below. Okay, so let's get on with the video. So have you ever been to a supermarket where they have those little stalls set up so you can try the latest drink or some random food item? The first time you go up, you're welcomed in, but if you keep going back, you start to get some funny looks and eventually you get told you can't have any more. Well, that's at least that's my experience. Well, if you could change your appearance each time you go up, we could get the friendly greeting each time and we could get endless treats. That's essentially what our rotating proxies are. Using the rotation that's built in with the provider, each new request we make, we get assigned a new IP at random and this has clear benefits to us. We appear to be a good user each time, simply wanting a single piece of chocolate and nothing more. This should be your default go-to, but what happens, for example, if the stall is much larger Larger. There's loads of options and our new disguise goes right to a very specific place to ask for a very, very specific part piece of moldy cheese. It's going to look quite suspicious. Much more of this activity in the store is going to start asking for ID, which we can't easily fake. So we use sticky sessions. We hold on to a single IP for a few minutes, following a natural chain of walking through the stall or moving through the website, collect what we need and then move on. After a short period of time, we do the same, but with a shiny new IP, as much cheese as we want. So this may be oversimplifying a little bit, but this is essentially the point that sticky sessions are for sites where we can pass the initial test and our IP gets the green light. We want to use it as much as we can before rotating. Most of the time though, I use rotating proxies. It's simple and effective, but occasionally you may find that sticky sessions work best. Okay, but how do you put these into your project and make it as easy as possible to use and change among any of the types that you need? Well, let's go and to open my code editor and do that code demo. So once you log into your account, you'll be greeted with a screen like this. You can see your credentials over here and your traffic over here. Uh, I'm gonna go to proxy setup and this is where you know everything's gonna be what we need. So I'm gonna start with, let's zoom right into this. There we go. So I'm gonna start with residential proxies. These are the ones I use pretty much almost all the time. 
um, and I'm going to say we'll leave the country on random, we'll leave it on rotating, this is definitely where you should start and you'll see we have the connection type host names recommended and we want to go down to here, it just makes it easier. So this is essentially the string that we need to connect. So I'm going to come over to my code and I have imported HTTPX and inside this proxy variable I'm going to put my proxy string here and I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to put in here my proxy variable here like so. So when we run this code, we should reach out to HTTP bin through our proxy and we'll get back this IP, which is the one we're using. So if we run it again, we should get a different one and a different one and a different one and so on and so forth. Now you can see now this is our rotating proxies. Let's look at sticky proxies then. So I'm going to do, um, I'll do US on the country, uh, random state, and we'll do a 10 minute duration. And you can see what's happened if I copy this string out and put it into here is that we've got the same username, password, but it's got this country, US session, lifetime 10, blah, 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 blah. So our string has just changed essentially. So I'm going to go and put US sticky in here, save, and we'll run it now. And we should get a different IP and then run it again. We should get the same one because this is now a sticky session that's going to last 10 minutes or so. I don't know if it's 10 minutes from the first request. I suspect it's probably not. It's probably going to be on a 10 minute cycle. Either way, you can see I'm getting the same IP over and over again. So to do the same thing within requests, um, what I've got here is I've imported requests and we're creating a session this time and we want to update the proxies in our session. And with requests, what you do here is you create a dictionary, one with HTTP like so, and one HTTPS like this. And yes, guess what? That's right. Our proxy string is just going to go right in here like this. Let's put that in, close this up and then come back out. And let's just request it, do uh, by request.py. And we should have, well, we've got the same IP, so we're still within that 10 minute window. And I'm using the same string here. So this is the proxy string. Now, of course, you can mess around with any of these settings that you want. Um, there's residential one, there's mobile in here, and there's also do ISP proxies. I haven't really tried these yet. You can try the mobile ones if you like, um, but there's residential there. So the last final thing is to show you how to use it in Playwright. Um, this is very easy as well. What we have here is when we launch the browser. Now with Playwright, it's worth noting that once you launch the browser, it's going to use the same proxy string over and over again. Uh, so you can't change halfway through, but you want to then go ahead and take the server. So I'm going to come back to um, the account page, grab the endpoint that goes into the server like this and my username and then the password in here and then when we run this uh, obviously I'm not on my US sticky proxy anymore so we'll get something different you see we get this this IP and again this IP and so on and so forth this is how you put them into your code it's just a text string how I like to do it is I have it as set as a uh, environment variable within my ZSHRC. So this is inside my ZHSRC file, which is loaded into my shell every time I open my terminal. You can see I have different ver different variations here and a whole load of stuff which I can't share with you, but you get the idea. So what I can do with this is instead of, let's go back to, uh, let's go to the requests version. So instead of these strings here, what I can do is I can go import OS and instead of this lot here, I can then import in, I could just do os.getenv and I can just type in the name, which I've just called proxy for my basic one. I uh, messed that up and then we just copy and paste this down, put you there like this and then change this to s. Now my code editor is going to complain at me here because uh, this, this, uh, this environment variable might not exist. So to get around that, I call it as a, a variable and then just check to see if it's not none. So let's just run this here and we should get our proxy response back. There we go. Different each time. These are the rotating ones. That's why. So remember when we had bandwidth limits on our phone data and our internet packages, you would get close to your limit and you'd have to close LimeWire and stop trying to download a music video at three kilobytes per second. Well, data does, co does cost money and proxies are no different, but here's some tips on to managing it and knowing how much you're going to be using. So a simple request to a single HTML page can vary a lot. 
It really does depend on the content. But a good way to find out is to use Python requests and print the length of the response.content. So content is the bytes response. It should give you a good idea of the weight of the page. For example, this full e-commerce page here is almost one megabyte, but this one is 285 kilobytes and the search page around 300. And if you're using Scrapey, once the crawl is complete, it will also tell you how much bandwidth it used. So that's useful to know. Then take the cost per gigabyte of the proxy service you're going to use and you can figure out rough costs. So if we take the second page, roughly 300 kilobytes, allow for some variation. It's about three pages per megabyte. So roughly 3000 pages per gigabyte. This cost goes up exponentially though if you're using a browser as the full data cost will include loading the browser and everything that it does. My best advice for this is don't use a browser rendering unless you absolutely have to. And if you do use Playwright or Selenium's built-in functions to block downloading of certain files like images, fonts and all that stuff to save on data. So you should now be armed how to use proxies in your project. But if you want to see some more in action when I'm using them, then watch this video next where we scrape 150k products using the proxies here.